Kia my my hari my. This is quite a special occasion. Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Koto. And just welcome to the members of the regional forum and Te Marama that are sitting in the audience. We'll we an item coming up shortly, which is a bit of a milestone. We'll go through the formalities first. So I move to apologies. We have an apology from Jerry McPhail. Maybe he's the only one. Do somebody like to move? The apology be accepted. Moved by Lloyd, seconded by Ellen. All in favour will say aye. 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 Item three declarations of interest. I'm not aware of any this morning. Item four public forums, petitions, deputations. Also not aware of any this morning. Move to item five, which is the confirmation of minutes for the ordinary meeting of council on the 29th of June. Are there any alterations, additions to those minutes? If not, would somebody like to move? Moved by Lloyd, seconded by Alan. All in favour will say aye. Right, we'll move to item six, which is the adoption of, com of committee resolutions. The first up is the Otago South Wind Regional Transport Committee's meeting of the 18th. Lloyd, would you like to comment on the meeting? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, we've got another meeting on Friday, so that'll be the first one that we've had in person for some time. So um, we've, we've learned how to Zoom uh, quite well. We're um, just looking at a couple of protocols there. Um, which is minor, but it's just if you're on the board, we expect to see your photo and uh, not just be um, on with the camera off. So um, we'll just tidy that up. We are just about to go into um, bringing the emissions um, uh, into the uh, long term plan for the uh, RLTP, and that um, workshop will happen tomorrow. So we've got on uh, Friday, so we've got some work being done there as we update it and bring in the the latest guidance from government. Um, there was quite a lot of discussion here around um, walkways, cycleways, um, other mode of transport and other fuel types that is um, on the agenda. Speed management is a big thing that we are working through and also road view recharges. So those things are alive and we're working with Mock and Tahi to um, deal with that in an appropriate manner. So um, overall the committee's working well. Um, the Otago uh, Southland Committee to co-chair it and we take turns of chairing it and it's, uh, it's a, a very well supported by staff and it's a good um, process to go through so if there's any other questions it's just a very quick um, overview. Thank you. Thanks Lloyd. Any questions for Lloyd? If not I assume you'll move on the resolution. Okay. Uh, second of that probably Alan. I'll put the resolution all of those in favour will say aye. aye. Uh, second up is the strategy and policy committee meeting of the 22nd of June. Eric, would you like to comment yeah, on that? I'm happy you? to move the adoption of the minutes. Um, it was, there were no pivotal decisions, but it was a valuable time as we were appraised of several activities taking place within the council, so it was good to be brought up today. Thanks, Eric. He's moved the resolution. A seconder for that. Seconded by Peter. All in favour. Say aye. 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 Right, item seven is notification of extraordinary and urgent business, supplementary reports or other. I'm not aware of any this uh, morning. Oh, oh, we were so back. No, we no, have. <laughs> back up there, sorry. <laughs> Lyndall, would you like to comment on the OPAC meeting of the 22nd? No, uh, um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to draw your attention to the fact that um, the Committee recommended that Council adopt the 2022-23 annual plan. Um, which Thank you. I'll move. I'll second. Move and seconded. Any questions? I'll put the resolution. All in favour will say aye. 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 Sorry, Linda. <laughs> right. right. Uh, item seven. I'm not aware of any of this this morning. 
I might as questions. I have not been made aware of any questions this morning. Move to a chairman and councillors' reports. The list of the activities I've been involved with is listed with, within the uh, document. We also, a number of us met with um, Karen McNulty uh, yesterday, who is um, the new Minister for uh, Civil Defence and also an Associate Minister of Local Government. Um, it was an interesting meeting. They were answering questions, very interested, listening, and very keen to have a look at our emergency management um, set up, which we were very keen to show them because we feel we've got a great model in Southland and one of the staff did make the comment it looked remarkably like the uh, the National Centre below the Beehive. So uh, I thought, thought it was a useful meeting. It was good to actually see some ministers face to face and, and be able to have a good conversation. It was one or two, probably uh, anybody else want to comment on that meeting that we were there yesterday? I can, Mr. Chairman, no, I, I was zooming in. Um, it was a good meeting and a good discussion. I think we made um, good points that the Minister um, listened to and understood and, and gave us commitment that he would come back with some answers to those questions. So I um, was really pleased that he actually wanted to physically get out and meet all the different councils and um, have a dialogue. And we also pointed out that the discussion topics vary. Some councils were very strong on some factors and others were very silent on others. So we found it really good to get out and hear what the concerns are on the different councils. And he wanted to come and hear from the regional council, not just the TA. He felt that it would take a more balanced view of, of, the, um, of his new role. And uh, he wanted to get a good background into that role by talking to the wider uh, range of um, councils as he could. Thanks for that, Lord. Uh, further councillors' reports. I see. I see Bonnie has one that was tabled. Do you want to comment on your report? Um, just wanted to say that it was a really amazing experience hearing from um, some of the young people, especially those who have taken up uh, youth council positions. They were really inspiring, really. Um, and I think that it would be good for us um, <coughs> to the opportunity to speak to the other youth in the region, um, I don't want to hog that for myself. I think it's really worthwhile if anybody else was interested in um, appearing at those. And just reflecting on our hui last week, it was actually great to have at least one with one young person on the panel there because climate change is going to be intergenerational. People in this room will be handing the banner, passing on the banner to some of other generations going forward. We've got Eric, and we also, yeah, then Peter. Uh, last week I attended the Agri Summit in Auckland and uh, today the conference with a lot of papers uh, being presented of interest to me was the second day which featured largely on climate change and what New Zealand agriculture has to do. Uh, most of the narrative that we hear and being commented on in the media and other places is, is what New Zealand needs to do. And, that doesn't need to be understated as a big challenge. But in terms of the world scene, where um, one third of the average footprint of dairying, for example, and one fifth of the biggest producer in the world, but we're fast being chased down by Uruguay, we are in the top slot. But of interest to me was some research that's gone on with the consumers. And in the, in the countries that buy the products that we produce, uh, there's a scepticism about offsets in terms of the products that we produce. There's an identified premium uh, with um, neutral <laughs> or no carbon footprint produced products, which has been assessed at about $26 trillion uh, that can be added to. Now, we don't supply all of that. That's the world supply of those sort of products. So that sort of identifies an area that hasn't had a lot of focus on it. And I thought a very interesting series of papers. I think, thanks for that, Eric. And I think the world is looking very hard at, at the ability to offset and not actually change. So it's good to hear that's coming through. We've got um, Peter McDonald, then Lord Easley. And Dave, stand up as well. And David, okay. Yeah, um, thanks, Mr. Chairman, and just a few 
uh, meetings that I went to of note. This uh, first one was on the 2nd of July with the new River Estuary Forum. Um, they seem to be building some momentum now in, around the forum, uh, around the estuary and engagement, which is really pleasing. So I've got a lot of focus on the landfill, of what's in there, uh, the leak shape, so forth, and on Pleasure, pleasure Bay. So uh, really pleasing to see they, they really sort of feel uh, they've got their wind at their backs now, which is quite pleasing. So also yesterday, um, the Central South and Forestry Discussion Group, really interesting uh, talk around food, uh, wood for fuel. And there was a forester from Otago that came down that's supplying the, the known uh, milk powder plant with all their biomass. So he talked about that in the future, very excited about the future of supplying wood for fuel. Um, so, and then just want to touch on the bale grazing day at the Ditchfields farm, which was, for me, was really pleasing. A lot of um, years, councillors in staff were there looking at different options around wintering in the future. I know David and, and Jeremy were also there. They might like to comment too on that. Thank you, Peter. Lord uh, Yeah, it's more of a um, question, Mr Chairman. Uh, the, the Council's represented on a number of um, different organisations, and some of those we haven't sort of had an update on. There's a couple of come to mind. One's the Broadcasters Trust and the Village uh, of Children Preservation. Right? I just wonder if maybe at the next opportunity of getting involved in those and in other organisations that the Council is. Um, Represented on can give the council an update of where they're at. Well, I think that's quite good. The uh, people on some of those committees in this room, um, I think Neville's on the, the bluff um, group. So, yeah, we'll make a note of that for the next meeting because yeah, it's good to get feedback. David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just Jeremy and I had an invitation to the uh, water. Conservation Users Group, um, actually through Bernadette, actually, and um, no, I thought it was a very good meeting. Uh, it certainly keeps us in the loop as to what's going on there, and very good ex explanation to uh, many of the users. Um, obviously, got I think almost 100. percent I think there might be a couple that are outside the outside the tent, if you like. Um, but no, it uh, I thought it was excellent, and um, no, they're doing a great job that. That steering um, committee is doing an excellent job. Um, obviously, no remuneration at all, but uh, certainly uh, keeping everybody up to speed with what's going on. So no, it was uh, a good meeting. Um, yeah, we went to also went to the um, over to um, Dillon Ditchfields that went inside for that um, bale uh, wintering. Um, uh, <laughs> Field day, um, no, it was interesting. Um, it was certainly have to have the, the right type of soils to actually uh, contemplate doing something like that. So, um, but no, it was very interesting. It's certainly great. Um, I looked around the room. Um, there was very few with actually gray hair, which I thought was great to see too. So, um, no, it was a good, a good day out. Thanks for that, David. Any Further reports, um, it's actually going around the countryside, we are seeing quite a change in wintering and I guess the, the benefits are that there'll be something green that's growing in the spring that'll uptake nitrogen, but I, I guess we need to also be reminded that keeping out of critical source areas and the, the same, some of the same um, issues that, that are on, on cropping paddocks will, will need to be followed, but it, it's great to see the innovation out there at the moment. Uh, Lloyd McCallum. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just a follow-up question to David. Um, while you're going through the um, allocation process, have you considered the limit setting process or is that going to be all done at the same time? Because I don't want to have a, an allocation process and then it'll be turned upside down within a very short period of time and go through another process. Have we got that sorted? I think that's something that uh, they're working through, actually, and we're well aware of, of that, uh, Lloyd. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's just, it needs to be worked through at the time to actually understand um, just where it's going to land. And it, it needs to be part of, of the process uh, in doing that. Um, so really, we need to keep in contact with 
um, the users group uh, just to make sure. I know I can see Bernadette on online there, but um, I don't know whether she has the opportunity to comment on that. But um, yeah, I think that's certainly, it's gotta be part of, of that process to actually get the outcome that, we, that they want or we need to. Well, thanks for that, David. And that group does seem to be doing a very good job. And um, the feedback I'm getting is we'll get to a very good result. And so that's that was the whole point of the exercise. So that's good. If there's no further quest, um, you know, reports, we will move to, to, uh, to uh, item 10. And the first item up this morning is the provision of the regional forum re report. So. Um, Look, we'll, we'll ask forum members to come forward. Members that are here, and I see a few online. But just before we get started on that, I'll ask Dean to uh, start things off with the Karakia. So, you're Dean, welcome. I'm going to put on Korero Hetino Rakia Tato Kato, Tene Kopapa, Emodia Mai, Ine Rangatiri Wanganui, the Po, the Po, the Po, the Po, the Po, the Po, the Tino Mahi, Mote Tau e Toru, Rikatu Ki Akwe, Okuranga Tere Ki Rungi Te Tepu Nei, Tena Koutou, Ane, the Regional Forum, Mikiatu Ki Akwoutou, Puri Noa Ki Akwoutou, Nga Kai Mahi, e Mahi, e Mahi Pai ki a Te Whakahua, Te Huarahi Mui a Tātou, Tena Koutou. Mikiatu Ki Akwe, i Wilma, mō tō tūra ngā hau, i tēnei wā, Ana te mihi o te iwi ki a koe, ki a kaha, ki a mai, ki a mana wanui. Ka tika, ka tīmata tēnei kōrero ki rongi i te kupu ki raro i te arawara o tō tātou atua. Nga nere te atua te aki manaki a mātou e ngā wā kato, ki a whakatau tēnei kaupapa e wanganui a tātou, te hāpore a muri huku, te whenua a muri huku, te wai a muri huku. Nga nere te atua te aki manaki i a tātou. Ki a awhi ani a mātou, ki a puta tēnau hua i runga te hua rahi, ki a awhi ana nga moko mō mātou ngā hude a muri aki nei. Tēnei tēnau atu ki a koe, huri ki a koe e rongo ki a whakairi aki ki runga whakamawa ki a tēnā. I just want to support your earlier words, Nicol, around it is a really special day. It's been a number of years that we've all got together, including the communities, the staff, Regional forum, especially like the Mihiatu Kia Koto, Moto Mahi. So, if you know the, the sacrifices with Fano and all these other things that you've done to bring this co up to the um, to in front of us, Tel Marama, and especially to um, the Tonga Taiao, and um, for your leadership, Nickel, and just acknowledge your new position, Wilma, uh, amongst us. So, um, Dean. Bonnie, uh, we'd like to introduce the forum and we'll go from there. Well, go to everyone. Um, just quickly, just to um, introduce all our forum members here, I'll, I'll allow them to introduce themselves and we also have, I think, two members online too. So it'd be nice for the forum members to introduce themselves. Um, this morning's item is obviously a, a major milestone for, for us all. Um, it's been an amazing effort by both Te Ao Marama, by our staff, by our forum members who have stood through the test of time, three and a half years for the majority, um, and produced, an, I think, an amazing report for us all to consider in our future here in Murihiku Southland. So just an amazing co-papa to, to present today, and I will hand over to Phil and Fiona to talk through their report um, this morning, um, and then I invite um, Lucy and Maria to talk through the next steps um, briefly with you as well. So we will have the forum's presentation, provide time for comments and questions, and then uh, the next steps will be talked through briefly, and then uh, obviously time for more questions and comments. So um, without further ado, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Dean. 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 Thank
to go and fill or maybe to introduce the team or the team introduce themselves and those online too. Uh, kia ora tato everybody, thank you very much for um, having <coughs> us here today. Um, I think we've appropriately introduced ourselves to the members that are, are able to make it uh, to today's session. Um, thank you for being able to come and also the, the members online as well. Uh, I'm Estelle and I'm uh, one of the four members, I think I'm the most of you, um, and been uh, involved since the inception, so very proud of this document that we're presenting today. Kia ora. You and Perry, member of the four, General Dog's body. Kia ora koutou, Paul Sean Gray, Taku Ringoa, kia ora, I'm Sean, uh, so I've been on the forum since. Uh, in March or April last year, so it's, um, it's been a joyful process to be a part of. And it's yeah, good to see it on the table in front of us all today. Um, <coughs> kia ora, most of you know me, I'm Fiona Smith. Um, I've had the privilege of chairing the regional forum over the last three and a half years, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a milestone day for us today. So, thank you. Thank you Phil, <coughs> Phil Morrison, uh, Deputy Chair. And thrilled to be able to support this work. It's been, it's been a real learning experience. Kia ora, everyone. Uh, Kane Duncan, one of the newer members of the forum. Um, but yeah, like everyone else has, has said, very uh, pleased to um, have this document in front of you guys. Kia ora, everyone. I'm Lisa Pearson. Um, I've been on the forum since the inception and I'm a um, proud member of the editorial team that put this document together. We've got a couple of people online. Um, Paul, are you there? Kia ora, uh, Ch <coughs> Chairman Nicol. Uh, my bandwidth is not particularly great, so I'll leave the video off. Um, uh, kia ora, everybody. I'm uh, delighted to be part of this uh, part of this Zoom hui. Um, uh, I think the document before you is. Uh, um, it brings with it real possibilities and challenges for sure. You're up. You're up, Paul. Bernadette. Good on, everybody. Uh, Bernadette Hunt, um, been on the forum since the outset and hugely relieved that there's um, a, um, a document to put before you, which we, you know, all, all you know, reached compromise and agreement on and are proud to, <coughs> proud to put in front of the community now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we, we do have a few slides to share with you, if that's possible as well, just to um, speak to rather than anything else. So, um, uh, we are waiting to put those up. Um, Um, so, Phil and I will, uh, will be doing this just this brief presentation. Um, this document to uh, run South Carolina. So, we're pleased and privileged to present to you the Regional Forum's full and final report titled Achieving the Community's Aspirations for Freshwater. Um, this report delivers the key findings and recommendations of Little Hickey Southland's Regional Forum on more than a three year journey of exploration, learning, consultation, and the gap between the state of our freshwaters now and where they need to be to sustain ecosystem health and resilience is large, and this cannot be overstated. Current and emerging good management practices are not enough. The most significant aspect of this report is the suite of recommendations which reflects an integrated package intended to deliver on the following community vision for uh, fresh water. Shown there, waterways are respected and managed in an integrated way, ki uta ki tai, that enables a thriving environment, support for our Tonga species, and a healthy and prosperous community. 
people understand and practice their role as kaitiaki and guardians for future generations and enjoy access to waterways for recreation and making a kai. In articulating the recommendations in this report, every attempt has been made to minimise ambiguity and to outline the supporting intent for each recommendation. Yet, acknowledging the uh, uncertainty associated with management of freshwater resources, along with the potential for external events that may yet influence outcomes, the Regional Forum has also tried its best to avoid being unhelpfully prescriptive. Thus, this report reflects an effort in finding an appropriate balance between providing sufficient detail while avoiding rigid authoritarian guidance that may hinder creativity and innovation in response to the central challenge of managing the region's fresh waters. Where prescriptive detail is provided, this reflects the forum's understanding of essential action that must be undertaken to support Tamana Otuwai and deliver on the fresh water objectives identified. Where detail is absent, the expectation is that Environment Southland and Te Ao Marama Inc. will continue to apply a co-design approach to implementation. And by this we mean mindfully and deliberately involving stakeholders to the greatest practical degree and applying the resource allocation philosophy outlined within the report. So the um, regional forum allocation philosophy is an important uh, concept. So there are four core concepts which collectively constitute the regional forum allocation philosophy uh, to respect the Southlanders and their love for this region, the management of risk across the region, the benefits of collaboration in response to the challenge, and the opportunity for learning and new knowledge. The combined influence of each of these four elements is discussed within the report. The Regional Forum's package of recommendations offers a coherent, integrated set of methods for regional freshwater management. However, it's not possible to anticipate and provide all of the policy advice that will be needed for the next revision of the proposed South and Northern Land Plan and subsequent planning processes over the next 25 uh, over the next generation, which is uh, identified as 25 years. Where there is silence in this report, the Regional Forum expects this allocation philosophy will continue to provide the direction for the future use of our freshwater resources. Um, from the community engagement uh, undertaken by the Forum, it is evident that there's been a strong interest in the limits and associated methods that will feature within the next land and water plan change. While provision for limits and methods have been included within the Regional Forum's recommendations, this is perhaps not the aspect that will deliver the greatest impact to Southland's fresh water and environment. What this report represents when all of the recommendations are considered as an integrated suite of me measures is a system reset, a very different way of managing Southland's freshwater resources in the future. This system reset, uh, or a transition to a more integrated form of catchment management, is considered a necessary response to future-proof our regional resource management systems for the challenges of the 21st century. So this system reset does not represent business as usual. New ways of thinking, new ways of acting, and new ways of collaborating will be needed in order to secure the fresh water our communities and businesses depend on for their livelihood. So the decisive outcomes that secure the future of that water will not take place in the lakes, rivers, aquifers, estuaries, and wetlands of Southland, but rather in the minds of Southlanders. The very way we think about our fresh waters and our land uses that influence those waters will need to change. New ways of thinking can be expected to enable new ways of acting, new ways of collectively and collaboratively behaving as we manage our way forward into the middle of the 21st century and beyond. So the salient 
features of the report, uh, key amongst our recommendations in this report, uh, the concept of integrated catchment management guided by Hoora principles focusing on the resilience of the water body. Co-governance through the introduction of freshwater management unit Hoora plans, the use of environment management plans by all Southland land users and businesses with the potential to influence freshwater Hoora outcomes, in the formation of a regional wetlands task force encouraging a multi-agency approach to planning and managing a regional program to accelerate wetland development. So in conclusion, uh, in summary, uh, an accumulation of many positive actions across the region, Kiutikitai, will return South East Freshwater to a state of holder. A collaborative focus on continual improvement and investment in the future of Southland will turn the Māori to our waters and return mana to our freshwaters and to the Southland community. Along with our recommendations, you also find within this report the foundations to our approach, the concepts, the modelling and the science that shaped our advice, as well as comment on our reflections regarding uncertainty, affordability, funding and timeframes. The regional forum members that were not able to complete the journey with us are acknowledged. Your unique experiences, energy and time has been invaluable and is hopefully realised in this final report. We're proud to present this package of advice that represents the full consensus of the regional forum members. For us and our children after us. Before we take questions and any discussion, I'd like to invite comment from any of the other regional forum members present and supporting today's presentation. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge and thank the support of Environment South and staff in Te Marama to make this package of advice happen. Uh, the amount of work and collaborative um, yeah, uh, work, effort and knowledge that's been shared with the forum has been immense um, and we would definitely would not have got to this space without that, that input. A lot of very good people here. So I can't see uh, Bernie and Paul, if you've got your hands up at all, but... Um... Um, yeah, I'll just, just want to very briefly acknowledge the rest of the Southland community. Um, very conscious that we were selected to represent the broader Southland community. There are people out there that um, would have liked to have um, been more involved or seen more of the process, um, and I just want to... I guess reassure them that we have been incredibly mindful of them all of the way through this process. Um, I, I feel like we're a good representation of the Southland community, representing loads and loads of different interests um, and or, or bringing those interests to the table through our individual kind of um, spaces that we come from. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that um, you, you everybody can read the report and, and find themselves in there and understand that we were trying to reach a, a, a position that um, would be tenable and workable and acceptable for all of Southland um, and, and a challenge for everybody as well. Stella, you look like you're about to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to total for acknowledge um, my fellow uh, forum members uh, and thank the um, Regional Council and Tao Marama representatives and staff who have supported us over the three years, um, three years of blood, sweat and tears that we put into this kaupapa and um, I'm, I feel proud of what we've uh, produced. Um, I think the mana that this document um, holds uh, will enhance the mana of Tao Marama and the Regional Council uh, and I look forward to um, hearing the any feedback on it. So, uh, so if there's any uh, questions or discussion, we have a small amount of time um, for that. Well, I'm not sure, Bonnie, if you've got time to share. Peter, I'll have you Peter, Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I just want to acknowledge the effort put into the report. It's been a very awesome job over three years. And, and most people were uh, leaving the room because they quite into it, sort of thing. And, and I saw the work program and the time involved, and I said straight away, I just felt like that's what's involved. But 
I, I really do feel in time we we'll look back and see that this was a turning point. And it's really important for people to realise this is a, a unique setup. This isn't happen around the country. We didn't. So we've done this in a South and specific way, like only we can do it. So I'm really proud of this. So thank you very much. Other comments? Lyndall. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, gosh, I hardly know where to start. <laughs> um, having been um, right at the beginning as part of the selection panel, um, I'm really excited that we've got to this point. And um, to render out the style, the blood, sweat, and tears actually starts for us now because um, we've, we've watched you bleed, sweat, and, and cry um, up to this point. And um, we've seen a great deal of personal growth. In, in the um, board members and collective growth. Um, so the, the challenge for us is to to use the new eyes and to use the new thinking um, to see what to see what you've really presented for us. Um, and that's not going to be easy because new eyes is pretty hard to, to approach something like this with when you've been around a council table. Um, also, I would like to um, acknowledge the, the tremendous role that Barbara and that her facilitation has played in getting us to where we've got to. Um, tremendous skill required to bring such a disparate group of individuals um, together to produce such a, such a, a momentous uh, watershed kind of document. So uh, please pass on my thanks to Barbara, first of all. Um, Yes, so thank you, um, and um, now I accept the challenge of the next step, personally anyway, um, to see what see what new eyes and what opportunities you presented us with in the next three months. Lloyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, a lot of what my comments have been said, but I just want to say how valuable, <coughs> excuse me, Valuable the time at the Marae was when you presented it to the um, to the council and to the board as a 99% uh, draft um, final. There's a couple of tidy ups afterwards, but I think that the presentations you had to be there to understand the the passion behind the framework of the presentations and what was actually said, um, and that stuck with me uh, and the individual comments as well that came about um, was something that was um, very meaningful. I think this mature this report I've commented before. This is a very mature report. It's a report that um, the more you read it, the more you understand the thinking and the framework that you mentioned, Phil and, and uh, Fiona, on the way through. Um, yeah, task now is to take it and, and bring it through to a um, slightly different report, but in a plan change. That's the betterment of Southland, and that's the challenge we have. But um, please don't go too far because we're going to have to use you going forward to understand some of the thinking, some of the decisions, um, what it looks like over the short term and the long term. But I'm um, very pleased we've got to the end of this work and um, we look forward to the next part uh, working in tandem with you and Tim Marama. And I just want to make the comment that the Tim Marama put some comments on the papers on page 35 which I thought were very appropriate and um, clearly explained their expectations for the work going forward and I, I agree with that Stephen Mudd as well. So thank you. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'd just like to again acknowledge the, the, the work that has gone on from, from yourselves. I mean, it, it, it has been a, a very long and and, uh, and complex. I mean, a lot of you are, are like ourselves, are, we're part of the community, we're lay people. Uh, we get involved in science, we get involved in, in, in uh, policy process, and yet we've still got to bring, bring the community with us because. Uh, we are, all have different skill sets and, and knowledge, ability to absorb information, absorb knowledge, and, and you put together a, a very comprehensive report that uh, is going to challenge us here in this room and, and our community to, to also understand the knowledge and learnings that you guys have, have been involved in. I mean, it's a quite, I mean, I'm sure it is a very, very unique process to, to be absorbed within within uh, Māori processes and, and obviously understanding uh, perhaps European ways of, of farming and and, uh, and disposal of, of, our, of our waste products. I mean, we've, we've taken the easy option, discharge to water. But 
it's, it doesn't resonate anymore. And, and that's, that's going to be a real challenge for us in the, in the smaller towns and the bigger towns on how we go past discharge to water. Uh, yeah, I, I admire the work that you've done and, and ourselves as, as councillors now are going to have to take that on board and, and, and move it forward and at a pace that you say that you want us to not, not drift. So that's, again, it's going to be our challenge and a new council that comes in in, in three or four months' time. Well done. Thanks. I'm going to rearrange things a little bit, Evelyn and I were further down the page, but I'd like to talk, uh, offer the opportunity to other uh, Tia Maram and board members to make a comment at this stage too, so... Um, oh, kia, kia ora koutou. Um, yeah, no, look, I, I say thank you, thank you, thank you for this uh, document. Um, as I was reading it, I've been part of the field and reincarnate as much as bringing them up. It's up at times, but uh, for me, you know, I was reading through this, that concept of gifts and gains, gains kept coming back to me. So as I was reading, I was like thinking, you know, here, here we've got a document, and some are going to have to go over for, for a day. Um, and, you know, and so there's a, a gift and gains, and that's how it's all um, gifting uh, something in some way to, to, for those gains that are going to um, um, support the I'll say ecosystem because we keep on talking about man in, in our communities and, and water. It's, it's an ecosystem, you know, you know I've got the I've document over there, the uh, economic dimensions. Of fresh water and, and, and that um, first statement is the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment, not the reverse. And I think that really says it all, you know, you can just try to keep that in mind. Because um, the environment's going to keep on keeping on without us. Um, um, and it's, uh, that's why I'm sitting here, um, and I guess what I did, we're putting ahead above the parapet. Uh, we've basically said to our communities out there, we've got this, we'll, we're going to make sure things are right. Um, and so, here goes the, um, for me, it's a, it's a good um, aspiration document that uh, gives us some guidance to, to take us in the right direction. And so, yeah, I'd say to say thank you, thank you for, for those, what is it, three years? Um, I don't need to do that. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 the outcome that has come is just it's excellent. Anyone else, Dean? Would you like to? Right. I'm going kind to of make an executive decision um, to change change the format slightly because I think it's more appropriate that myself and Evelyn will speak now rather than after the um, resolution. So I'll go first and then Evelyn will make a few comments. Look, firstly, thank you for attending today to present your report to us. The members of the forum have delegated a significant, and that word shouldn't be underlined too much, amount of work to this task. I'm sure the job was much bigger than you were taking on. So you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the commitment you, you've had I'm sure it's, there's been some sleepless nights among the forum over the time. And your, and your mission was to provide advice to the council and Tia Maramara on how we can meet the community's uh, objectives for fresh water in Southland. The completion of this report is a significant milestone in meeting our fresh water challenges together as a region. I, I believe, you know, that this is a unique Southland initiative. Um, I don't know that it the other region I was joined up that had the relationship with with Tia Maram with us gone back a long way and when I look at this report it is actually quite groundbreaking it is probably different than I imagined I think the public are going to be, be wanting to read it because they think there's going to be numbers there and at the end of the day we have to we do have to have some numbers but what you've given us is a blueprint for action and actually we know that numbers don't improve fresh water, action on the ground does. I'd also like to acknowledge the, um, the advice of the scientists, the technical experts, experts in Natatoria Maori, traditional knowledge, and other advisors that the forum have worked through to form these, these um, recommendations we have here, here today. 
you have taken a holistic approach on how we might ta tackle our water quality issues, considering not only the water, but climate change and biodiversity, but all these issues are related. And you've, for a number of workshops, you, you know, you've kept us updated with your progress. And I've been really impressed by, by the scope and scale of the recommendations that you've presented us in this, this document here today. Now it's up to us. We, re, we accept your report and, and we will, will now look to how these recommendations will inform plans change to Atahi next year and our wider work programs and of course our, our next long-term plan. Te Marama and, and Southland have been working together in partnership, particularly in the, in the freshwater space for many years now and I, I believe we've got a strong relationship which will help us move forward. We work well together um, for the benefit of the whole community and we look, look forward to seeing the progress that will make, make it a, a plan change. And I also look forward to get, getting out and talk to the community, hopefully, if I'm still here next <laughs> next year, because the community, I guess, are waiting, waiting, and, and they also want to have some feedback on probably on a catchment basis before we go through that formal process. But look, thank you for the mahi that you put in. Thank you for this report. I think, as Lloyd has said, I think it's a very mature report. And it, it, it doesn't give a whole lot of descriptive things because we know things will change. But this is a blueprint, I think, that it's going to take us sort of to the end of the journey. And some people will look at this report and jump to the end of the journey. We know this is a journey, and we plan change to Atahi. We'll, we'll sort of signal the first 10 years. After that, there'll be a reset, and that the, the journey will continue. Some of the wetland stuff, I guess, will take some time to work out with LIDAR and everything else, where the best places are. But th thank you again. And at this stage, I'll hand over to Evelyn. O katupana. Uh, te mea tuarua ki a koutou i mahi nei, i tēnei kaupapa here here mō tātou. Um, so, my first mihi was to those who are no longer with us, who left us their knowledge so that we made, made informed decisions for now and for our grandchildren who are yet to come. For those of you who worked so hard on this kaupapa, um, those of you who represent community, those of you who are our staff, can I just say, um, I can't say it on behalf of Environment Southland, but I can say it on behalf of <laughs> Te Manama Governors. Our staff make us look so good every day, every hui, because they're the ones who do the real hard work. And I am everlastingly grateful for the input that they have had that have enabled this day to be possible. Um, because, you know, I'm only the chairperson for this year. Um, this is a, a journey that has that actually began um, probably when I worked for the organisation 27 years ago, uh, 26 years ago. Um, it, just as you worked for three years, this has been a long time in the gestation and it can only have been possible because of the really good relationship it has grown between Environment Southland and the Iwi as represented by Te Marama. Um, so I thank you all. I hope that um, we continue to uh, have a fruitful and harmonious working relationship. It does not mean we will not sometimes come to disagreements about processes or um, results, but it does mean that We've embraced the idea of open communication and acceptance of one another's uh, worldview, and we can debate it, but come up with something that best serves our community. So on that basis, thank you for the opportunity to speak, Nicol, and councillors. Um, I know I'm not at my own table, but thank you for letting me share yours today. Kia ora, and thanks, Evelyn. And uh, your promise to the staff, uh, I think, wrapped for both organisations' staff. So. Thanks to them.
So at this stage, I think we've got Lucy and Lauren who will talk through the next steps just before we put the resolution. And Maria. Oh, yes, come forward, Maria, too. Yeah. Um, we'll talk very briefly, just um, and a lot of you have already noted the work that's still to come. Um, so, um, as has been mentioned, this is a really significant step in the water space um, and in our freshwater water work generally. Um, there's been a number of changes that have come at us over the last three years whilst the forum has been doing their work, and um, those need to be factored in with the forward as well. So, the, the new and um, pollution quality effects of freshwater management. I think one other thing I just really wanted to highlight, which was echoed in the, in the form report, is the fact that there is no longer really a clearly definable line between what's traditionally been called regulatory and non regulatory. Um, and I think the regional forum's articulation of that is really useful for us as we move forwards. I think also just to note that um, the partnership that got us here will be how we intend to continue. We will continue to work in partnership, Council and Te Marama, with our stakeholders and with the community to figure out um, what's next and to address the topics that we need to um, in order to um, deal with the challenges that are before us. So some of those topics obviously mentioned in the forum report, but um, ones we're very live to, stormwater and wastewater, our wetlands and health protection, as well as the development and application of our so the solutions to these challenges need to be a mixture of the non-regulatory and the regulatory, um, and they need to form a package of solutions that our freshwater panel in due course will be able to consider, and will be able to justify when we get to the terms of that. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, kia ora, kia ora for this, and um, kia ora for Kiwi Bill for Woods, Evelyn, and um, and councillors, um, to, uh, we do recognise that um, as part of the partnership at staff we will, we will be a significant amount of budget to use um, to bring this to life and really um, it will be our job to honour the regional forum in the um, area that we're going to go forward uh, to get um, to position uh, to face the environmental challenges and and stand up well to the variety of um, legislative challenges that we to come with. Um, this is a great foundation, I think, um, you know, to continue to be proud um, and to um, and full of optimism for the future of South Korea. Thank you. Any other comments before we move to the resolution? I'm happy to move the resolution of one, two, and three. Moved. Moved and seconded. Any, any further discussion? Just, just be, before I put that, this, this, is, this is historic. This, this is a great document. And we can, we've got a good basis to go forward to the public. We know we've got a challenge, we, but we know it's a journey, but we know the end goal is having, having a, a very um, prosperous economy that's based on, on fresh water, good soil, and, and a great future for our generations to come. So, on that note, I will put the resolution. All in favour will say aye. 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 Against no, carry. And I think we should give a clap to our I'm not sure you're all off the hook yet. We we may have some have some questions, but you're know, just a fantastic resource and just thank you for what you've done for us. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Just before Tamara do leave, I'm just wondering if I could re reschedule. We've got a um, coastal plan item that you may wish to sit in for. Or, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if I could reschedule. 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 Yeah, I'm just wondering if I could reschedule.
Vi såg att vi såg att båda nåt på oss. Så det är. Okay, so we will now move to item three, which is the discrete plan change for the regional coastal plan for South and page fifty-one. Welcome, Lizzie. Would you like to speak to the item? Thank you so much. So, um, yes, just briefly to talk to the item chair. Thank you. So, um, it will be fairly well trodden for most of you, I hope. Um, the Service Water Activity Plan change that is before you today is um, intended to assist us to address the increasing intensification we've been experiencing in Fjordland. Um, it's a temporary fix to assist us in the short term whilst the rest of the Regional Coastal Plan review is undertaken. Um, if Council resolves as recommended today um, to publicly notify this plan change, uh, it will take immediate effect. And um, because of that, we've done some um, preparatory steps in terms of briefing our consent team around what that might mean, and there's FAQs and, um, and some stuff that have already been had in order to assist them with that. Uh, once notified, we'll need to seek public submissions, and the approximate timeframes for that are included within the paper itself on, I think, page 55. There's been a small number of changes in response to the two parts of pre-notification and consultation that we've done, and that's outlined in the report itself, as well as in the track changes version of the actual proposed um, policy wording. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but otherwise, um, I don't chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question, Tim Merriman's actually given a, it looks like a submission, but it's really a, a comment on the plan. I've seen it before. They've made some uh, recommendations in there. My understanding is that you've incorporated those recommendations already. Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. Well, what do you say? Yeah, um, that's the same topic as Tim that I put that before. Um, this, um, the there's an awful lot of space in your load. And I've, I've traversed it uh, probably 30 or 40 times for the cruise ship. And um, the, this, the, the wilderness and remote values, which is which is very subjective, because if somebody is seeing your vessel and thinking it's intruding on their view, then they are intruding on your view. Um, just for comparison, doubtful sound from Archer is about three times the volume of um, Milford sound, which is pretty much fuller. Um, Dusky um, Tamatea is about seven times the volume of Milford, and um, uh, preservation in Chalky, that's um, much rarer, is about eight times the volume. And, uh, and Going through those areas, occasionally there is a distant glimpse of another vessel, and there's there's an awful lot of room in there. And um, I think that in all of those times we've met, I've met two other ships, but I don't even remember them. There's the the Austral and the, the Norwegian Jewel. Um, and, and larger vessels provide. Um, a bit of scale, somebody is looking at the majestic mountains and things there. Um, their um, intrusion in, in the landscape is, is minute, and I just can't <coughs> see how we can say that there's pressure on the fjords when there is such a, when we're just using such a tiny bit of it. I mean, do you expect a, um, a landscape or a seascape where there is nothing at all visible? Um, it just seems that you know we've got a policy that's going to exclude tourism, which um, makes it difficult for people to get in there. And on, on those big ships, these are um, people from all around the world that come to New Zealand specifically to see the order. We should be welcoming them. Uh, they come to see their planet. It's part of their planet. I mean, it's part of New Zealand. It's part of their planet. They want to see it. Why should we make it? So difficult for people to get into the order with all the buildings. Do you want to comment on 
And that uh, doesn't really affect the big cruise ships that were that, that are uh, uh, they were in a restricted um, so circuit anyway. But. Yeah, no, that's correct, Chair. Through you, um, so the cruise ships aren't covered as part of the um, surface water activity plan change that we're advancing um, in this plan change. And I think that um, in response to um, Councillor S's question in terms of you know the protection that's required, the New Zealand uh, Coastal Policy Statement requires us to take a precautionary approach. And the intention with this plan change is to um, put in a precautionary approach whilst we figure out what the most suitable limits are. Um, so that work needs to be undertaken via the Coastal Plan Review more broadly and will include other um, mechanisms for measuring the fjords in terms of, in addition to the remoteness and wilderness values, we need to take into account natural character and landscape values. So. That process is underway, but the Field and Marine Guardians and our partners at TAMI as well were very concerned about increasing intensity around the consent applications that we were seeing and the consent interest that we were seeing. So this plan change is only intended to um, hold the line between now and um, when the coastal plan comes into effect. So a lot more work needs to be done to ensure that we are taking full account of the um, specifics of the where is their space and where is there not? But it's a fairly complicated um, movement that we have to get through. So this is hopeful. We're hopeful with this plan change that we will um, pause any further intensification whilst we figure out the most appropriate limits. And that will need to include cruise ships and those medium-sized ships as well, like the expedition boats, which are um, covered, um, get caught at the moment in the way that we all set up these uh, cruise ships. But uh, the council and the board may choose to delineate the way that we can. Um, those two different kinds of boats. So that all needs to happen. We need to be doing that in the next part. It's not covered as part of this plan change that's currently Peter. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. That was a really good explanation. And I get what you're saying, Lloyd, but the worst possible situation is that we enter into uh, legislation and retrospect after the fact. So this is not about what's happening now, it's about protecting and taking that precautionary approach into the future. So we can get in the position that we know exactly what we're doing. And all I would say is uh, legislation and retrospect can be very hurtful. So supporting this. Anybody else like to comment? Stuart, you on the go. Yeah, Kia ora. Um, yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, what we've seen come to is, um, and it might be due to COVID, and keep them off and put them more closely at home. But um, one might call a bit of a cold, um, cold rush was starting to happen with people applying for um, consents and concessions to um, the Indians. And, and that's the same. Once so they established there, then, then there's no coming back, is there? So, so it was a precautionary um, um, move and, and um, a recommendation that that's where we might go. And, um, and I guess we're Oh no, the coastal plan is uh, another one of those plans that we uh, would like to bring you to a conclusion, but it's um, we haven't quite got there yet, and I'm sure we can address a few of those issues that um, we brought up as we go through the year. So it's very important to um, move on. Thanks, Stuart. Any other? I'd like to move the recommendations, Chairman, and I'll support support for. The consultation, the wide consultation which has gone on before we reach this stage. Um, and we're seeking feedback on the proposed changes so we can deal with our coastal plan. Thanks, Neville. Seconded by Bonnie. Any further discussion? And we're, we're it seems it's a discrete plan change, but it's an awful, awful lot of pages. If there is no further discussion, I will put the resolutions which have been moved and seconded. All in favour will say aye. 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 Against no. Carried. Thank you for that. Now we will uh, return to, to item one, but I just thought it was valuable to have uh, input. Item two. Yeah, I'm sorry, item two. Um, uh, it's normally item two. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm not going to say something. I have to wait till 12.30, is that right?
Yes, I shall. Thank you. Well, item two is the chicken of report. Well, what would you like to comment on? Your mm -hmm. Second, Mr. Chair, kia ora. Kautau, councillors and guests. Um, Chief Executive's report highlighting the issues for the last six weeks and the matters before us. Um, have some of which have already been discussed. The fact that we adopted the annual plan uh, for 2022-23, which happened at the end of last month. Um, and that matters relating to the fees and charges schedule um, arising to that annual plan are in today's um, in today's agenda for discussion and decision. Um, just a few items to highlight. Of course, the highlight for today was the receipt of the regional forum package of advice, um, which will now be informing a significant amount of our work um, for the next few years, not least of which the plan change to Otahi, which we are hoping to have in a draft form for commissioners by the end of 2023. So it's a significant amount of work ahead of this council arising from this report. Um, there are, however, of course, many other pieces of work going on in the organisation at the same time. Just wanting to highlight a few more of those. The um, essential parts of our water program include matters relating to the um, implementation of freshwater farm plans and we have been fortunate to actually have um, be part of a test case project to trial what those templates may look like. Um, we've been working closely with Taumarama on that and have received some funding from the Ministry of the Environment to assist with that um, and our work will also be helping to inform those templates for other regional sector participants um, into, in, in the very near future. We're hoping to be able to work on that in the next few months and have this concluded this side of Christmas. Um, and we're very grateful to our ministry partners for that funding. Uh, just a few other things, matters that have been um, before us in the media. There has been, of course, significant conversation in the media about equality in the last um, few days. Just to um, remind councillors and others that the work we have actually got a domestic burner survey out in, um, out in the community at the moment. A very important part of our understanding of behaviours in relation to our um, domestic burners. And while the latest report that I know you'll be discussing this afternoon in the workshop includes matters relating to, um, to transport and motor vehicles in particular, domestic burners are still the majority of um, the cause of air quality problems in this, um, in this region. So, an important piece of work that's going on currently in our science team in relation to that. Uh, in terms of our biosecurity, um, councillors will know that um, we released a statement yesterday confirming the matters that are in the report today in relation to both um, an infestation of sea squirt and also Undaria and Rapura, and um, that information was released yesterday, and I'll send you an update about that yesterday to councillors. So. Um, just to focus also in terms of um, the rest of the regulatory team, the matters that um, relate to the nitrogen cap, those rules that are on the 1st of July, there's been some conversation about that um, in relation to today's um, fees and charges schedule as well, but just to um, highlight the fact that that conversation has been happening and that information has been released to the public on that regard and that there's an online form being developed and a central portal is being developed for people to be able to access to upload that information. The um, intensive winter grazing engagement has been underway and this year um, we've certainly had a significant amount of rain recently. We've had um, site visits, flyovers, and there's a bit of an update on the report about that just now. I don't know if there's anything that you would like to update any further or about um, that work since the report was put together last week. No? Okay. Um, 
at a staff level, we are, we are still in the process of recruiting a number of vacant positions. Um, I think we are in a similar state to most organisations in New Zealand um, um, and finding that we are you know, in a constant state of rolling vacancies. Um, we're also in the midst of our bargaining round right now and, um, and that is um, expected to be concluded by Wing Energy, do you think? Well, we do not need coming up in August. These things take the time they take. Yeah. And we're also in the same situation as most other organisations. We've certainly had a wave of COVID go through this organisation upon everyone's return to work. Um, it's affected staff and councillors alike, I think. Um, and Southland's experiencing that. I also noted yesterday, in fact, when we met with the Associate Minister for Local Government, that his staff were commenting on how much influenza A there was in Wellington, which we hope they didn't bring with them. Um, but certainly we know that there are, there are other um, other viruses in the system, we are actually feeling the impact of that with staff and the fact that we need to just pace ourselves that our pro, you know, speed of work is, um, definitely has slowed down as a result of it. Um, and it's very nice to see a member of Pressy today, which we haven't actually had for a long time as a result of them not wanting to catch COVID, so it's nice to have them at the table. Um, I don't really want to focus on anything else in that, I mean, you will have read it. If there's any questions that you'd like to ask of any of myself or any of my managers, they're here to answer those questions. Thank you. Peter and Lloyd. Thanks. Thank you. Just a wee quick uh, question. We've got our catchment liaison committee meetings. Um, they have been completed with some action points for the staff to follow up. Uh, one thing in attending those meetings throughout Central South and was a willingness to come together for a presentation by this council around uh, environmental challenges and I would also probably add to that the forum's report now we're very keen to engage us uh, around that so I hope that we can progress something like that for those groups as a collective. Uh, tentatively looking at August as a certainly key to get the show as a start before we come to the liaison committees. Lloyd. Yeah, well, Chris is really a follow on to that. I think the, the view around the table was that we'd meet with the chairs or the liaison groups um, at least four times a year, one in their own patch and the other two or three is supportive, directional, um, helping them actually understand the changes that are coming and, and Peter's quite right, and there's other information coming that they need to be aware of. Um, I just want to make sure that we actually have that soon, not later. Um, I think you get a lot of credibility by coming back soon and then giving a program of work for the rest of the year. So they're, they're highlighted their AGMs in their area. Um, so I want to make sure that we, it's a very good touchstone in the community. We pick up a lot of information through those meetings. So I want to make sure that we have the, regardless of the election process, we need to, as an organisation, interact with these on a regular basis. So I'd really like a year plan of what that looks like, so they know what to expect, and when when they become and what the topics are that we'll be interacting with them as well would be would be my plea. Well, I've got Alan Lindell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm I'm looking at page 45. Uh, so it's uh, mm. some area that Bruce may have some knowledge of, and I'll just pick up on the. Uh, the Gore District Council Waste Water Treatment Facility Limited Notification. Uh, one of the more contentious aspects of our, of our uh, processes is the discharge to water. Uh, limited notified, only one submission uh, was received. So are we referring to, obviously, Gore District Council has uh, the Matara town and, and its South Gore. So is this, does this relate to Matara's discharge, or whose who's discharge is it? For you, Mr. Chairman, that particular application was to desludge their existing wastewater treatment pond and create an area of water to uh, desludge which would annoy the application to that wastewater pond. So quite a lot of was issues specific to that particular area. Uh, we did have a hearing with the WCA on the area before the Commissioner, Mr. Cubitt, uh, from the meeting. Um, the submitter in opposition appeared at that and the decision has been issued uh, with grass and consent subject to conditions. Uh, the broader issue of the Gore District Council's waste recruitment system 
um, is uh, that, that is both in terms of coming up for renewal and that's been engaging with the council in that space and they're looking at where it's off at the moment. So the larger school system is being considered by the district at the moment. We haven't received a formal application for that as yet, but they have been listening at this point. There's a follow up. Has, has the, has the Matara uh, consent expired or is it uh, still active? Uh, still active at the moment. And he was um, continuing to work towards the local authority application and looking at options for that at the moment. I just had one further question, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is winter grazing flights. So I understand the MPI are also on those grazing flights. Is that the case? So can you just clarify that point? So MPI are conducting your own flights, they're not in flight with us. They're not. You know, back on had a couple of calls, you know, there was a fixed wing plan flying around last weekend that was very specific in where it was going. I was able to assure them that we were using a helicopter, it was not our flight. We probably are due for another one, but we normally say we're, when we're going to be going out again. So there is some interest out there. Um, Lindell. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Two things, if I might. Um, firstly, just to um, acknowledge everybody's um, participation in the climate change hearing last week, um, both from staff and councillors to um, our fellow councillors across the region and their staff and uh, invited guests. It was a really positive day, um, and you know, I think we've got some next steps, some positive next steps to discuss um, at the Climate Change Subcommittee tomorrow. Um, and the other thing was the Environmental Enhancement Fund um, under biodiversity. Um, really pleased that some of those projects are being finalised. I wonder if there's a, an opportunity um, at the right time for us to hear what those have been and, and, and what has been achieved, given that we um, increased the budget for those projects. It'd be quite interesting to see what's actually going on and um, in the right forum, whether that's OPEC or whatever. Thanks. Maybe through um, regional services might be a good place to, to do that. Any further questions on this report? It's quite a comprehensive report. Uh, Peter. Yeah, I just want to pick up on that early question about the MPI flights. Um, I think it's worth talking about. So we obviously have an arrangement, the council with their own flights, we have an arrangement with the MPI. They said that one does one section of the province, the other does the east and west. Is that, that correct? So do we have the same criteria that we're looking at? Are we looking at, obviously, uh, environmental or MPI's more animal welfare, is that correct? Um, yes, that animal welfare issue, we'll report you the discharges that they note during the flights to us with the and what's Okay, so was their reporting uh, not sufficient enough for them? Do you know? Or? I, think, I think it's more that their, fo their focus is very much animal health and as part of the um, winter grazing task force that we uh, created a year or two ago, mm -hmm. uh, they've been part of that. Uh, we're sharing information. Uh, I'm sure Paul will correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. The um, recent report was that they had found nothing in the early part of, of, of the winter. They've been out to one of two sites, but were pretty happy with what they were seeing. But again, it's it's about being joined up, and we've got different, resp different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We're there for the environmental effects. Their domain is obviously animal health, but like all things, it makes sense for us to be working together and sharing information. But Paul, have you got to add to that? Um, yeah, nothing more to add that, that we will continue to coordinate, but it, um, it, it does certainly have different um, areas of concern or areas of, 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 of uh, focus, um, but a part of it is how we continue to coordinate. But, as I'm, I'm updated by uh, my team, that actually the flights have been really positive, yeah. and uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, yeah. well, not to say that there won't be issues, but certainly we'll be seeing issues. Uh, 
I'm always concerned about yeah, overlapping work, um, which can be avoided. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Any further questions on Wilma's report? If not, I'm going to use the report moved by Neville, seconded by Alan. Check online, there was nobody else. Put the motion, all in favour say aye. 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 Right, we'll move to item four. We have around the place a little bit, which is the explosive. So item four is the exposure draft of the national policy statement on indigenous by diversity on starting on page 153. Welcome Lucy, would you like to comment on the... Yeah, so uh, the item uh, number four in front of you um, includes the draft exposure um, response to the exposure draft of the national policy statement for Indigenous biodiversity. Um, we had a workshop with yourselves uh, a wee while ago. In fact, we had a couple of workshops, um, and the draft submission reflects those discussions. Um, keen for any further thoughts that you may have. Um, um, keen for any other further commentary that you'd like to provide for us, but the, uh, we're intending to submit to, um, by the 21st of July. Um, obviously, there's a couple of other recommendations there in terms of the ongoing work that's required in terms of how we implement the NPSID um, and uh, direct, um, asking council to direct us to continue those conversations with our partners and our stakeholders. It's highly likely that the um, exposure draft um, will be presented the year, um, and we we'll be able to crack on and have with our partners. So, yeah. Thanks, Lucy. Any questions, uh, Lloyd? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, take a bit of interest on this and some detail. Lucy and I have had conversations as well. I'm just wondering, Lucy, whether we need to put another bullet point um, after five <coughs> to try and pick out what is mentioned in uh, 384 which is the um, partly the suitably, suitably qualified ecologist, the um, interaction between landowners and ecologists and, and their own ecologist reports um, with a dispute resolution type. You've mentioned it there down below. I'm just wondering whether we should pick up the essence of that and guidelines because we're, we're multi-structured, multi-stakeholder group working for the same plan which actually picks up the where is the central data and how accessible it is, but the, the, there must be one place that, that is true and correct. I'm just wondering whether we could put another point in there, trying to bring that together to give the reader the first hand, these are the issues that we will need to solve. You've mentioned it down below, but I was wondering whether it's important enough to actually bring up to make a, a point to so. Helen then Peter. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. So again, just on, on point five of page one fifty eight, we've indicated it could cost uh, twenty million for Southland alone. How over what sort of time period do you envisage that to, to that spending to occur over? Is that a two year or five year or a ten year uh, expectation? My understanding is My understanding it would be at the total cost for implementation as it currently stands, but am I right on that? Uh, yes, that was calculated on the number of potential SNAs I think might be out there um, versus the time it takes to establish them. So over five years to get an ecologist to each of those sites um, was the estimate and then the implementation would be beyond that. So we get to the investigation. That's our cost as an environment. Southland's cost nothing to do with what the TA might be having to do. That would be the combined cost. Combined cost, so a Southland cost, this is not necessarily environment Southland's cost. Peter. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. That sort of touches on my comment around inadequate expertise and funding. We the enormity of this is just incredible, really, isn't it? When you think all regions across the country are going to be buying from government to try and maximize policy. Um, how, the question I have is how do we work together as Southlanders 
um, a realness, and I think that's imperative, really, it's, it's pretty clear that we, we can't just be pinching talent off, off everyone else and then with us. So, thank you. Very much. I think the 7.4 actually brings it up in the bottom line. There just needs to be a memorandum of understanding. We can't excuse this work unless we have that with the agencies that were involved in. So, we're just following on. We're not happy with some of the prescriptive, expensive stuff that was in this report. We've been waiting for this NES for a number of years, and I think it does need a bit of panel reading yet to make it. <laughs> User friendly, but having having a consistent regional approach makes sense. Incentivising people looking after and creating biodiversity, I think, is a far better way. Of some of the stuff is actually going to have the opposite effect, and that really concerns me. We we, we want to we want to enhance our biodiversity, but so, so as usual, the destination is fine, but actually, I um, have some concerns about. The government's going on this a little bit at the moment. So, you know, I have to, uh, Lloyd. So, just to follow on, I, I think there's two parts to a response here. One is the formal process that's got here now, and, and you make up a small, small change in response. But I think there's a number of matters, and this is one of them, that we actually need, after yesterday's uh, conversation with the Minister, we actually need to have a one to one, face to face conversation with high level in Wellington to actually get them to make sure that the, the key messages out of their submission is actually interactive because I think there's a little bit of distance between where our um, uh, Wellington staff are and where the minister's intent is because if we put the case that we want simplicity but we want effect on the ground, um, we may do things a little bit differently than what's set out in this plan. So I think there's two parts. One is a one-to-one -one conversation, which I think we, we normally have when we're up there about a number of matters. This is one of them. And the other is we need to keeply follow through and actually put Good information forward through the report. Lucy. Just on um, Captain McCollum's point and to Councillor McCollum's point as well, um, I think that there's this kind of two layers as well. We need to be really clear in Southland what our response is and how we're working together with the TAs and other entities, and we also need to leverage where we can off the regional sector more widely. And that's um, how we make sure that we're the strongest voice together to say this will be a challenge everywhere. Um, but actually, you, you need to not be pinching from the whole regional area. That's just quite a bit. Make sure we're getting out because there are hills to figure out how we can do that in the most efficient way. So, yeah, just want to make those two. Well, Alan, then Lindell. Thanks, Mr. Chair. So, we've just had uh, the regional forum give us their report. Uh, wetlands, obviously, a big part of what, what they're looking for. With this the NPS and IB, how how will those two focuses align, or is is there uh, more stringency in the IB than than where our regional forum, or is would it be the other way round? Um, so, in terms of stringency, that's a slight different question, really. The IB is very stringent about how we need to achieve certain outcomes for indigenous biodiversity, and in terms of wetlands, it doesn't get into a huge amount of detail. It's just terrestrial, but there are recommendations in there about what we need to be undertaking in terms of what we do with the forum's advice and where to from here to weave these two things together. I think that's going to be a really crucial conversation for the council to have around whole order planning and what we want to use whole order planning for because if we are um, implementing as um, we may choose to in terms of what the forum's advice has been um, to achieve a state of whole order and return our water and our land to a state of whole order, we need to be considering biodiversity and have so I think that's the place where we as Southland can define how we bring these things together. But the IB doesn't take us there. It wants to do the whole job. So we figure out on how we bring these things together. Lundell. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Just wanted to express, perhaps on somebody else's behalf as well as my own, um, the frustration um, that I feel often um, when we are presented with a, a exposure draft that's so vague and inconsistent, um, you know, um, we've got a lot of our staff, particularly, a lot of things being um, presented to them from further up the island, and um, something that is lacks so lacking um, on such an important topic um, is pretty frustrating. 
So congratulations to those of you who have managed to make um, sensible contributions um, in, our, in our submission. Well done. And I guess there's not provision on the exposure graph, graph for some of the things that we know would probably really accelerate um, the establishment of more biodiversity and protect what's already there. One of them is flexibility around um, the interpretation of carbon credits. The other is government showing leadership with their own organisations, Dock and Linz, who own a, a whole lot of marginal land around our rivers, and there's a real opportunity for them to partner with, with Southland and the community to actually establish um, more biodiversity, which we know has got multiple effects. We've got, we've got um, shading, we've got filtering. This is just another area that, that actually um, would enhance our, our goals for fresh water. And the more we can work to, together with these agencies, the, the, better, the better it would be. But, it's, but I know I'm getting off track slightly on what you put in front of us. Are there any uh, further comments before we uh, get somebody to move the resolutions? I'll move the recommendation, Chairman, and noting Lyndall's commentary. We, we, we have an opportunity now to provide some feedback, and we're taking the best use that we can of that and hope that it'll have an effect. Yes. Moved by Bonnie, we'll thank for that. Seconder. Seconded by Bonnie. Further discussion? I will put the recommendations. All in favour will say aye. 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 All right, we'll now move to item five, which is the 2022-23 themes and charges. Thank you. Welcome, Rachel. Would you like to comment on the item? Thank you. As councillors will recall, uh, there were fairly minor amendments proposed to our fees and charges schedule. Some of those are flats for a... Um, put into a statement of proposal which has been out for public consultation. Uh, we put the information in a number of places and solicited in the item, so the key um, consultation was through the Enzyme and Express in the Facebook posts and we did some further, which we can share from like around the number of hits, but we're reasonably confident that the information did get out. Um, no submissions received, um, so at this stage the recommendation is to um, Adopt the schedule on the 1st of August. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, comments? I'm sure we've got one or two. Lloyd. The Chairman, uh, I've expressed my concerns around this. I, I under, we've looked at it from a council perspective, and um, it's minimal changes, it's more around a set up and that sort of thing. I'm happy with that. But I am concerned that through the consultation methods that we used, that I'm not sure whether we're hitting the target with, a, with the right information, but through a reference information, not actually a quick summary of the changes or a, um, um, an attachment to an email that actually gives a, a very quick outline so people can actually see. So I think we just need to look at how we communicate and make sure it's effective on the ground. Um, that's the only comment I'll make at this stage. I have no problem once the fees and charges is being set out by the, the um, schedule. Well, further, further comments? I, I guess we did have a discussion earlier about was our communication as good as it could have been, and, it, and, we, and we probably need to apologise to some of the sector who didn't get information as clearly as they should. But I agree with Lloyd, it's, a reason, it's, it's really a CPI type change, and I, I'm reasonable. We can be comfortable with passing it. I'll move the recommendation. Moved by Eric, seconded by Bonnie. Any further discussion? I will put the resolution. Everyone in favour will say aye. 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 Move to item six, which is an update to the staff delegation manual. Mr. Chairman, can I be excused, please, after that um, supervising the fifth zone? Rather you than the the me Lord, oh, but you're excused. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you down for next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a reasonably straightforward item. It is, uh, just reflecting changes to um, provisions for delegations. 
allowing acting team leader in finance. It's a new delegation to have up to ten thousand dollars and change in titles for the science coordinators and um, social scientists. And the chief financial officer's authorization has increased from thirty thousand to sixty thousand. So just read the right in the delegations. Oh, Motion second. Is there any further comment? I will put the recommendation. Aye. 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 Right, we'll move to item seven, which is the council of committee schedule. Is there any change of additions or alterations or uh, a members? number of changes? Um, the meeting with Fonterra Reps, which was proposed to happen this afternoon due to illness within the Fonterra team, has now moved to the twenty third of August. Uh, there is a climate change subcommittee and a council TAMI workshop being added to the schedule for Thursday tomorrow. And uh, there's a Southport subcommittee meeting scheduled for Friday the 15th at 4 o'clock for council's uh, immediate changes that I'm aware of. There are a number of um, dates on, I have listed as council workshop topic to be confirmed. I understand they will be policy development workshops taking the um, regional form report further and will all be required. Lloyd. Okay, a little bit off topic but it's related. I think that um, sometimes we meet with the organisations and it's a very, very limited number of councillors and yourself and the CE. Um, I'm wondering whether we could actually have you know, the volunteers who've done it before in the past or the regional land or, or whatever company to talk to for wider council. Or part of your interaction, I think that would be meaningful for us as um, interacting with stakeholders, and they can bring their concerns or issues that they're dealing with, or what they're trying to do to help bring their sector up to meet some of the um, NPS for um, three quarter of 2020 and, and other matters that is alive in their portfolio. So sometimes I like those meetings to be a little bit wider in their context. No, that's a good point, and if possible, we'll make a suggestion. Thank you. Anything further on the meeting? No additions or no. recommendations. Moved by Eric, seconded by Bonnie again. All in favour will say aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move to item 8, which is reporting of selections and restrictions. Oh, this item related to the purchase of property at Waituna, which is ultimately owned now by TY Pereira Trust, but the transfer of the funds went through council books through the um, Living Streams project, and it was above the delegated authority of the general manager and chief executive together. Just to authorise an event. As, as, as council, your governance policies require that it be reported to you. Right. I'm happy to move with Jim because I'm involved down there, but it, this is a um, formality process. Uh, it's not our money, we're just the banker for it and we hold it and we pass it on. So there's been quite a dialogue through this um, historically. Um, and we're now looking forward to a work program coming out to TY Power for this property. So um, the issue is alive in the bigger picture, but this is the background to make that difference. Move by Lloyd. I just need to abstain from this one. I beg your pardon? I just need to abstain from voting for this one, just to right. conflict, because I work for AW. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so second, well actually I can probably second it myself because I've been closely involved with that one. Any further discussion? I will put the motion, all in favour will say aye. 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 One abstention. One abstention. No, 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 Move to item nine, which is the common seal. All in favour say aye. aye. Right, that will conclude the um, public session of the meeting this morning. And we told you to turn off our live stream. Well, Jan gives us the reasons to go into. Public excluded. Going into public excluded to confirm the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on the 29th of June and for the adoption of committee resolutions of the Organisational Performance Law Committee on the 22nd of June 
reasons are to prevent the disclosure or use of official information from proper gain or advantage, to allow Council to carry out commercial activities without prejudice or disadvantage. Would somebody like to move, that move into public exclusion? Moved by Eric, seconded by Neville. All in favour will say aye. 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 